we're talking about potato um, uh, with this for our stacked uh, best management practices project. Um, I, you know, the, the four R's has been d discussed and essentially we're going to be looking at this on potato, which is a really unique crop um, in a lot of ways. Um, it's particularly inefficient in nutrient recovery. And as a result, we get extremely high fertilizer rates, uh, often double of what we put on most other crops. And, uh, and then as a result of that, we, we get some pretty high potential uh, nutrient pollution rates. And so, you know, we're, we're interested in that from an environmental perspective, as well as for farmers, you know, not wasting their, their money and, um, and uh, being able to produce a, a good crop is, is always important to us. Um, so these nitrogen uh, best management practices, in fact, we just recently published a book, uh, Potato Production Systems, and in that book, uh, I, I and uh, some of my a couple co-authors wrote a chapter on nutrient management for potato, and, and we've listed uh, a variety of best management practices for nitrogen for potato, including if we start uh, looking at um, uh, source, for example, we, we want to, you know, apply some type of a source that can help us be more efficient. Uh, we want to use an enhanced efficiency fertilizer product. I'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, lots of research uh, myself and many others have done uh, in terms of the right rate. Potatoes are particularly sensitive. Uh, if we don't get enough fertilizer, like most crops, we, we lose yield. But too much, too much nitrogen can also be pretty detrimental. There's a fairly narrow window of, of optimum nitrogen placement nitrogen rate. Placement right wise, we obviously need to have that nitrogen in the root zone and it's a, a pretty limited root zone with potato. And then the right timing, potato is again particularly sensitive to being spoon fed its nitrogen throughout the season. If I get a too heavy of a, of a shot of nitrogen, it can, it can actually delay tuberization and then uh, slow things down and affect yields as well as tuber quality. So, so we've got a lot of research on all four of these things, but in some cases, we have, you know, we have uh, like a, a source trial with rates, but, but we don't, we rarely have got uh, as research looking at all four of these, uh, again, stacking these, these, uh, these things. I, I don't have time to talk about everything, but I thought I'd just kind of focus in on some of the sources. Um, we just start talking about enhanced efficiency nitrogen fertilizers. Um, we split those up into two groups, slow and controlled release, and and then the inhibitors and stabilizers. Uh, with the controlled release, these are things that are released by physical processes. Uh, for example, some that are listed here. In this particular trial, we're using ESN, which is a, a polymer coated urea uh, by Nutrien. Um, there's some others there that I've worked with and others have worked with too. We also get slow release fertilizers. Uh, these are released through chemical or biological processes and and again, you know, we, we could have chosen some of these to focus on. I've done research on a lot of these, and some of them are, are pretty good. Some of them are less, uh, less effective, but we've got a lot of data on those. We also have these, again, inhibitors, urease inhibitors, for example, uh, lots of good products here, um, nitrification inhibitors, uh, again, uh, lots of good products there. So I, I just wanted to just kind of put this up there and say, you know, we're focusing on one, uh, source, but we could have chosen a, a variety of these things. I, I, I really um, have a lot of experience and confidence in polymer coated urea, especially the ESN product. I've uh, just got a lot of research on it, and that's part of why we, we landed on that particular one. Um, so, and, and just briefly, the way that works is that you have this uh, urea, and it's, it's got this polymer that's coated around it. It, it prevents that, that nitrogen from coming out uh, right away. Uh, water moves in and as that begins to dissolve and, and the coating, it kind of expands and the coating softens over time. There's a variety of theories on why that happens, but, but it, it ends up the nitrogen is, is released in a controlled fashion uh, that can be engineered to release at particular timings depending on the thickness of the coating. And so that, that's essentially how it works, which, which the bottom line is, is that it presents that fertilizer in that spoon-fed fashion for, for my crop. Uh, and we've had good luck with that with a, a wide variety of things, ranging from turf grass to, to uh, wheat, uh, barley. 
So what happens again when we start stacking these BMPs together? That's, that's what we really need to, to know um, and, and the emphasis of this trial. Uh, I, I'm actually using a reduced, or we're using a reduced number of treatments uh, in contrast to what uh, Matt and Jared showed. Uh, we felt like there were some things that have already been proven just not to be effective with potato, and so we eliminated those and are just focusing on, on these nine treatments. We're, we're looking again at urea versus a polymer-coated urea, and we have a, a control, obviously. Um, we have some timing placement issues, essentially looking at applying the nitrogen all pre-emergent uh, or having a split, uh, a split application that's more of the grower standard practice. But the question is, is if I'm using polymer-coated urea, do I really need that? Is that uh, beneficial or does the spoon feeding from the polymer-coated urea eliminate the need to split the nitrogen? Um, and then we've got a couple of different rates uh, that we're looking at um, based on some previous research that we've got. So anyway, we've we, uh, got some, uh, here's the field. Uh, we're working with a cooperator in Grace, Idaho, uh, Ryan Christensen. He's, uh, Christensen and his family are awesome. Uh, they wonderful cooperators. Uh, you can see here uh, that plot right in front of you in the foreground is a nitrogen deficient plot. I've got chlorosis stunting, uh, the rows aren't closing compared to the, the plot right behind it that it's got adequate nitrogen. Um, again, when we get nitrogen deficiency, it's, it's common to have chlorosis, reduced chlorophyll. Uh, we don't get that green color. It tends to show up in the older leaves first because nitrogen is uh, mobile in the plant and uh, tends to move to those new leaves as, if it's needed. Um, this is a video uh, that one of my students. This is going to be his master's project, project, and so I'm going to let him talk for a second. Oops, I don't know what happened there. Me. And today is July go, that better? 1st. Yep. What we're experimenting with here are the four R's of nutrient management. That would be the right source, rate, timing, and placement of fertilizers. Um, and as you can see on my right here, this is our control treatment that received no fertilizer. You can tell it's uh, experiencing some chlorosis due to the nitrogen deficiency. And on my left over here, this is one of our treatments that did receive fertilizer and we can see the plants are a lot healthier. So the visual symptoms uh, between our treatments are pretty subtle at this point, but we expect to see a larger difference as far as nutrient concentration once we conduct uh, petiole analysis. All right, um, I, we've also got some drone imagery of the field. Uh, you know, we can see some differences. If we kind of, yeah, it's a little early to see too much. We've got petiole analysis showing some, some, some differences beginning to appear in terms of the nitrate nitrogen in those plots. And we're beginning to see some differences. Uh, a little tough to see too much here, other than you can, you can pick out those control plots. Uh, this is a, an NDVI type of an image where green is healthy um, and red is not healthy. And, and you can actually see that those potatoes are, are not doing well in those control plots uh, and the, the rows aren't closed uh, showing up in these images. So that's about all the results we have so far. We're anxious to, to see the rest of this uh, project layout. Um, anyway, I think I'm about out of time, uh, maybe one minute for any